Hey guys, it's Shanu with InnoKinetic here to talk to you about tuning advances that we've been making. Um, last weekend, we hosted a track weekend and my good friend Brent Fortin from Exclusive Tuning came out and we decided to take the opportunity to do a tech seminar. A whole bunch of you guys tuned in virtually through Google Meets um, and we recorded that. Now, sadly, sometimes technology doesn't work as well as we would like it to. And I'm not sure what the hell happened, but we we're both mic'd up and somehow the sound did not come through in the recording. So anyways, it reminds me of a song from Adamski. There was an album that came out in the 80s, late, late 80s, early 90s, live and direct. And the song, I Love Technology, which I do like and I do love technology, but sometimes it drives you crazy. So anyways, sorry, we will not be able to um, showcase um, that video, but what I thought I would try to do is cover some of those subjects that we talked about in the seminar. So that's what we're going to try to do in today's video. All right. So guys, we, as you know, have been tuning these cars for many, many years. I think we started in about 06, 07. Um, we, we used to work with a guy, Charlie Wallace, also known as Charlie X. And then we worked with Steve Carlson and our latest calibrator, Brent Fortin, has really been making some major, major advances in our abilities. You know, you may have saw, watched the video where we interviewed uh, Brent um, earlier this year. Well, even since then, we've made some further, further advances that we want to talk to you about today. So in this video, really, we want to talk about what are the things that we're really realistically, you know, doing um, as far as when we tune a car, what is it that we are after? So the things that we're typically modifying in a factory calibration, and again, these are all for track use only, of course, but we modify fuel, the spark maps, engine load, cam timing, and even some air control related um, parameters. And so anyhow, let's talk quickly about what are the cars that we have been tuning? Well, we've been tuning Elises and Exiges, naturally aspirated cars, supercharged cars, We've, you know, Brent has recently gotten a, quite a bit of good control over the turbo cars. I know there's a handful of them out there that, generally speaking, you know, struggle to run on factory ECUs. We now have some very, very good tunes for the turbo cars. Um, of course, the Avoras in, in all iterations from standard naturally aspirated Avoras to supercharged cars, the GT, the 400, we've got multiple tunes. In fact, we'll talk about one of the advances that we've been making on the Avora front soon. Um, and then, of course, the track day cars, too, the cup cars, the 211s. In fact, last weekend at the track weekend, there was a 211 that was running way too rich. It was just running very, very poorly. Um, that owner had bought that car used, and it had been previously tuned um, by someone else, and it was not running well. Brent, luckily, was able to tune that car, get, that thing, you know, get it running well so they could have fun on track with the car. Um, so... Anyhow, these are all the cars. Emiras, we hope to be tuning those cars as well. Here we are in December of 2023, and the Emiras are at the port, but they can't deliver them until early next year. We, see, we hope to have our hands on those soon enough as well. So how have we been tuning? Well, many of you are familiar with these programmers that we sell that allow us to, and allow you, frankly, to flash um, your cars. So the basic process is we send you one of these programmers, you connect it to your OBD2 port, you read the stock file from your ECU, you email that to us, we modify your file, and we send it back to you, you upload it through the programmer, and then you've got a flashed car. And what's cool about the programmer is it, can, it will hold the stock file as well as the tune file, and you can switch back and forth. So sometimes the programmer is unable to read this, the, the file that's in your ECU. And that could be for one of two reasons. One, we don't have that particular stock file in our um, database, or it's got a competitive tune on it that we don't recognize. So in either of those situations, what has to happen is you have to send us the ECU back. We will bench read it, 
and if it's a competitive tune, we have to put a stock file back onto it, and we send you the ECU back. We update our our database, and then you're able to then read and reflash. So, anyhow, if you've ever have any questions about it, certainly give us a call. So, let's get to what are some of those advances that we have been making in recent months here in recent weeks. Um, engine load and those maps are one of the key things that we have really, really started making some further advances. So when you look at the engine load maps, one of the, the greatest advantages with that is we're able to improve some drivability related um, things. As many of you know, we have never been the company that is trying to extract maximum power out of our, our, our calibrations or tunes. We've been the guys looking for more drivability and, frankly, reliability. So these engine load maps have been fantastic for us because it's enhancing and, and improving the resolution of our tunes. So what else? Fuel injection. Okay, in, in regards to the Elise and Exige, we now have full control over the fuel injection maps. So that's a wonderful, wonderful thing in particular because we can see the enhanced drivability and frankly improvement in power that we're able to generate. The Katana 3 tune that Brent you know, developed has some key, key, yeah, really key advantages now thanks to our full control over fuel injection. So cam timing, of course, is another one of those things that we've got good control over. But some of the key things, and probably we can't really get into full detail, because even I don't even know all of that, but Brent has managed to identify some of these real sub-maps, some real key fine-tuning maps that are very much going to help us with emissions. As many of you know, we are looking for a Katana 3 um, kit that we can sell as carb legal. So we're going through the emissions testing. Now that we have better access to some of these fine-tuning maps, we think we've got a really good shot at it. So we're super, super excited about that development. What else? Evora. Okay, we now have a partner who is port and polishing the superchargers. So we're developing a stage two tune for the Evora. The first car, I was a bit of a guinea pig on this, that um, we've done a quick tune on in a few different you know, iterations has generated, I think, an additional 40 horsepower. So we're super excited by that. We've got a car coming into our shop early next year that we're going to do further, further tuning on that so that we can have a really, really well-developed stage two tune for the V6s in the Avoras and frankly, the other cars that that tune or that engine can be found in, including V6 Exiges as well as in the future, the Amira. So anyways, those were the key points that we really discussed in our uh, tech seminar from last weekend. Uh, again, I, my apologies for having the technical difficulty with the sound. Don't know what the heck happened there. I'm, I'm, you know, you know I've shot enough videos here, so what the hell happened? I don't know, so sorry, guys. But we will be, probably when Brent comes actually out early next year to tune um, some additional cars, we may do another video at that point. And we might do, again, the Google Meets program which seemed to work out pretty well um, and so look forward to seeing that um, this is probably the final video of the year because here we are with just two weeks left in the month it's already mid-december so happy holidays guys thanks for tuning in if you have any questions never hesitate to reach out you know you'll get a response from us so thanks for tuning in we'll see you guys next year